Hello and welcome back to my little film and TV channel. I've got a two-part documentary to have a quick look at today, so slightly different format to what I do on the films and TV drama reviews. It's actually on all four this at the moment, all the second episode as I'm recording this on Tuesday the 16th of August. doesn't air till this evening, but uh, this will be going out on the Wednesday anyway. So it's The Porn King, uh, The Rise and Fall of Ron Jeremy. Yes, certainly know this guy from way back in the day, of course, uh, I'm a man of a certain age who obviously uh, sort of uh, interested in the times and I lived through these times. So it's quite an interesting documentary and it's uh, shocking what, what's obviously come about from this. But this is what this little documentary does. So whether you were there or not, or if you're young, a lot younger, it's, it's just a documentary that perhaps needs watching. This is on Channel 4, Monday the 15th and Tuesday the 16th of August. As I say, it's on all four now. It's about... 88 minutes in total, something like that, anywhere up to uh, 90 minutes. And it's, of course, the story of a porn star who, after 40 years in the adult movie industry, is now facing multiple charges of rape and sexual assault. And as he awaits his trial on 34 charges, uh, this programme, this documentary, lays bare the prejudice women face when dealing with sexual assault while working in the porn industry and many other things, of course. And what I'll do, I'll, I'll read out, as I said, it's a little bit different to the normal review I do. Uh, I'm, I'll give you my views on it, uh, it's quite simple at the end, but I just want to read out an excerpt from Lucy Mangan, who writes, who does these reviews, film reviews, drama reviews, document, documentaries as such. Uh, so I'll just read a little excerpt, I'll read excerpt, a, a big excerpt out from her review, if that's okay, just for your information, because most of what's said, I, I certainly echo the sentiments. She goes, for all the second wave feminism I read at university, nothing brought the systematic disadvantage to women and the embedded power structures of the patriarchy home to me like my first sight of Ron Jeremy. This would have been in the late 80s, the beginning of the porn star's heyday, and he already looked revolting. Yeah, he, wasn't, he was okay. As a young man, he wasn't overly ugly, but obviously he seemed to, obviously at age, uh, you know, he seemed to get uglier and perhaps a little bit more vile to certain ladies, and obviously not to all ladies, of course, but uh, to certain, you know, visually, visually, he was, I don't think he was an attractive man, although he wasn't overly uh, bad looking, at, I did think personally, this isn't Lucy, when, when he was younger, anyway, I'll carry on. That was kind of the point of him, I understood. He was there so that every man, no matter how unprepossessing, could inch his erection a little closer to the dream of being able to shag all the desirable women that came into his orbit. He was there to assure them all there was no standard too low. The two-part Channel 4 documentary, Porn King, The Rise and Fall of Ron Jeremy, gives a voice to some of the women who have been the subject of his attentions on and off the set, including some of those whom, according to their vivid testimony, he raped Jeremy is in jail waiting, if found medically competent by experts, trial on 34 charges. They include 12 of rape, including a 15-year-old girl in 2004, forcible oral sex, penetration with a foreign object and sodomy, the last allegedly taking place in 2020. Jeremy denies the charges. The documentary follows a distressing, depressing pattern that's been become familiar to us through the likes of Surviving R. Kelly, Jimmy Savile, A British Horror Story, innumerable programmes about Jeffrey Epstein and most of Netflix's true crime output. A predatory man uses his charm, wealth, power, a combination thereof to abuse the women around him, either ignored or enabled by those in his employ or otherwise benefiting from, it, benefiting from his position. He goes unchallenged for decades while the women look for the safety to speak up and then must fight to be heard and taken seriously. The problems women face in such situations are, of course, multiplied immeasurably when they are women in the porn industry. Absolutely. The idea that if somebody consents to sex once, she has effectively consented to it forever and with anyone was partic dies particularly hard when the woman has sex for a living. It doesn't hold up under the slightest scrutiny, but even the slightest scrutiny of endemic prejudice is always in short supply. The former adult film star Ginger Lynn says Jeremy raped her in 1983 after she and her then-boyfriend refused to let him join in a sex scene they had been filming earlier that day. The next day on her 21st birthday, he was used as a last-minute substitute for another sex scene with her. Although he had always been, always been on her no list, I didn't want to... I didn't want to F-U-C-K Ron. He was old, hairy, smelly, she remembers, and he thought he was funny. 
British born and bred Leanne Young moved to the US in her early 20s at the turn of the millennium to work in the porn industry. I knew I would never do a scene with Ron Jeremy, she says. The man is grotesque. She describes chatting to people at an industry party where he came up behind her, pushed her over a table, and shoved his penis inside her. It all took about four or five seconds. He has lived, she says, rent free in her head ever since. The silence of the onlookers remains deafening. There are accounts of other assaults too. The podcaster Susie Q describes a particularly violent one from when which she escapes with bloodied underwear after he suggested they go somewhere quieter for an interview she had asked for. His defenders include the unsettlingly vulpine porn pastor Craig Gross adduce mitigating evidence that are blurred lines in an industry where touching and being touched by the fans you meet is expected. These there are the years of adulation clouding Jeremy's judgment, or they simply insist that the goofball they know just isn't capable of any untoward behaviour. Several of them query why Lynn worked with Jeremy on more than one occasion after the alleged rape. She did a dumb thing when trying to get closure, she says, an impulse that anyone who has tried desperately to normalise a terrible thing will recognise. The documentary gives fair time and weight to each side and leaves it up to the viewers to decide which they find the more convincing. The woman who are part of the case against him oscillate between rage and weariness. Rage of a different sort bubbles away underneath most of the interviews with the others. Occasionally, as with the pastor, when he snarls, let me effing finish talking at an interviewer breaking the surface. Depressing, distressing, yes, but terrifying too. And on we go. There you go. So uh, my thanks to Lucy Manga. I mean, yeah, I mean, most of what she said, I just picked that excerpt from Lucy. It does... It does the documentary do due respect for, for what we get in, in say, the 88, 90 minutes. Uh, a tremendously well put together programme that gets on with the story. There's all repetitiveness if you get in some of these documentaries now, uh, these days, where you see the same thing over and over again. It just gets on with the story, good and bad. Uh, no repeating comments, just different interview, different people. For and against, as I say, it does progress more against as the programme goes on, but it's looking at his later life and these things are coming to light rather than the early days where it was all fun and games, of course. And, yeah, it just gives you the comments and it, it asks you, the viewer, to make a judgment. As I said, the court case has not come to court yet because of various problems. Uh, for me, yeah, yeah, this is what investigative television journalism should be about. As I say, it wasn't totally for, it wasn't totally against a bit in between, let you, let, let you make your own mind up, which is what a jury would have to do when it comes to a court case, wouldn't it? But, uh, for me, I thought, I'd say, I'm not going to give it a mark, but it's just a must-watch. Um, and, and please do so, please do so. And let me know what you think, guys. Get back to me. Anyway, thank you very much for putting up with me, and thank you again for so Lucy, quote Lucy quite a lot. So I uh, hope, she, hope, hope that was okay anyway, but I thought it sort of uh, summed up most of what I was thinking, and why, why not? A, a, a very well-known critic in her, in her own right, and, uh, and from a, a female perspective as well, which of, which I do not have, unfortunately. Or fortunately or unfortunately, whichever, whichever way you look at it, but I just don't do it. So there you go. Oh, you enjoyed that, guys. Let me know what you think. Please, until we meet again, please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.